All right, my friends, let's learn a little bit about motion graphs and how to navigate between them. Um, so here are these three graphs on the left we're going to look at first. Um, in the middle here, we have a velocity versus time graph. Uh, and what we're going to do first is go from the velocity graph to the acceleration graph um, using the slope of the graph. And so you notice that for the first two seconds of time here, this would be one second, this would be two. For the first two seconds, the slope is one. And so we can just plot a constant acceleration of one for the first two seconds. From t equals two seconds to t equals four, you can see here this downward sloping line on the velocity graph has a slope of negative one. So the acceleration is negative one for that time interval. And then finally, between, say, t equals 4 seconds and t equals 5, the velocity is always 0 here. Well, so that means the acceleration is 0. Um, so we're just reading the slope. The slope was 1 for the first two seconds, negative 1 for the next two, uh, and then 0 for the last second of that adventure. All right. Um, to get the position graph from the velocity graph, we just look at the area under the velocity graph. So what we're going to do is divide it up into seconds. So during the first second of motion, the area under this velocity graph is 0.5. It's like half of a box. All right. And so what that means is in the first second, the object will advance half a meter in position um, from where it was. So after the first second, we go up on the position graph half a meter. So that's what this blue dot is here. Um, if we look at the next second, the area under the velocity graph just during that next second is one and a half. You'd have kind of one complete box and then half of a box. And so what you do with that one and a half is move that far uh, from where you left off. So from where I was at t equals one second, I move one and a half units of position after that one additional second of time. And so you can see this position graph building up a little bit. Um, during the next second of motion, the velocity is still positive, but decreasing. So we need something that's going to slow down while moving another one and a half units. So what we're going to do is move up another one and a half units from where we were. Um, and so that's where I put this little blue dot up here. Uh, and then during the next second, we move another half of a unit. It might be meters, half of a meter. And so I'm going to move up another half unit as one more second goes by. Um, and so you can see this this curve building up. Uh, and then finally, in the last second, um, we our velocity goes to zero. So that means we don't move at all in the last second. So that means we maintain our position here. So the position graph will be flat. Um, so here is your position graph as a function of time. What we can do next is divide this up into little you know regimes here during the first two seconds of motion, we had this steadily increasing velocity. And we can write like a polynomial that models that. Well, it's a pretty simple polynomial. It's just the velocity equals t. It's a linear function, right? Just v equals t. After one second, the velocity was one meter per second. After two seconds, it, it was two meters per second. Very simple function. Well, what we can do is get the slope of that function. Well, clearly, we already know that it's one. But another way to get the slope of the function is to bring the exponent down in front of the t and lower it by 1. Um, and so you'd see we have an acceleration of 1 times t to the 0 power. Well, anything to the 0 power is 1. So you get the acceleration as a function of time being 1. We can kind of play a similar game uh, going for the position function here during the first two seconds. What we need to do is think about which function we could do this power lowering trick on in order to get v of t. So notice. Since the velocity goes like t to the first, the position must go like t to the second. Uh, but if I do this power lowering trick, I would get 2t to the first unless I f sort of modify it by putting a 1 half in front. Uh, and then the other thing we need to think about is there could be a constant here. right? Um, this would be like a constant times t to the 0 power. And then if we tried a power lowering, we would get 0 times t to the minus 1. So this constant would go away if we did our little power lowering trick. Well, to figure out what this constant is, we can look at a known position, which is where we start. We happen to know that uh, x of 0, x at t equals 0, is equal to 0. Well, so if we kind of plug in t equals 0, uh, we learn that c equals 0 then. 
Um, and so in all its glory, we have this position function, one half t squared. Um, so if you do this power lowering trick to go from the position function x of t to the velocity, it would be two times one half t. Um, in other words, it would just be t, which is in agreement with what we get for the velocity function. Um, let's try this for the next two seconds of motion, this downward sloping part of the velocity graph. Uh, here, this function would be described by minus t plus 4. Uh, it's like y equals mx plus b, kind of. The minus t, minus 1t, the minus 1 represents the slope. Um, and then the plus 4 would be like the y-intercept of that function if you extrapolated back. So the velocity function here is minus t plus 4. Well, if we do this little power-lowering trick to take the slope, um, you would have minus t to the first. So you'd bring the 1 down in front. So you'd have minus 1 t to the 0 power for the first term. Um, and then this would be like 4 t to the 0th. So if you did this power lowering trick, you'd bring the 0 in front, and then it would be 0 times 4 t to the minus 1. Um, well, the first term is minus 1 t to the 0, which is minus 1. And the second term, well, it doesn't matter because it's 0 times. It doesn't matter what you multiply 0 by. You just get 0. So the acceleration as a function of time for the next little interval here is uh, negative 1. Well, so we're going to play the same game looking for this, this uh, sort of teal part of the position graph. So we need to think what function could we do this power lowering trick on to get minus t plus 4. Well, the first term is going to have to go like t squared um, because the first term of the velocity goes like t. And the second term is going to have to go like t to the first um, because the second term of velocity goes like t to the zero. Um, well, so this would be the function that would sort of uh, describe the position then. Um, so let's double check. If you bring the 2 down in front, you'd get negative 1 half times 2, which would be negative 1, um, times t to the first power. Um, and then the second term would be, well, you'd have t to the first here. So it would be 1 times 4t um, to the zeroth, which is just 4. And then you can always put one of these constants here. So to figure out what this constant is, we need to use like a known point. Well, the last known point was where we left off was when t was equal to 2 seconds, the position was 2 meters. So x of 2 equals 2. Well, let's plug in 2 for t uh, and force the entire function to be equal to 2. And then we can figure out what the c value is. Uh, so let's try it. If you plug in 2 for t, you'd get negative 1 half times 2 squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, but negative 1 half of that, of 4, would be negative 2. Uh, plus 4 times 2, which would be plus 8, and then plus this c. That combination of things needs to be equal to 2. Well, so we have uh, negative 2 plus 8, which is 6. So 6 plus c equals 2. Uh, what that means, then, is that that c is going to have to be negative 4. So finally, we have it in all its glory for that uh, the next two seconds of motion between t equals 2 and t equals 4, uh, we get this position function for that segment. Right? Um, let's look at one last example. It's this graph that's on the right, the set of three graphs that's on the right that we haven't touched yet. Uh, and remember, the first thing we'll do is go from the velocity graph to the acceleration graph. And if you remember, we take the slope to go this way. Well, so the slope of this velocity graph for the first three seconds is negative 1. You can just read it right off the graph. And the slope of the velocity graph for the last two seconds is positive 1. You can read it right off the graph. We can uh, model the functions that we're seeing here. Um, this function would be minus t plus 2. It has a y-intercept of 2 here and a slope of negative 1. Uh, and if we do this little, well, finding the slope of that, we already established the slope was negative 1. Um, for the rising part of this graph, the line that sort of fits it would be t minus 4. It has a slope of 1, and if you extrapolated back, this would have a y-intercept of minus 4. Um, well, as we mentioned, the, the acceleration graph is the slope of this velocity graph. Well, you could tell the slope of t minus 4 would just be 1, because it's like 1t minus 4. So our function is just a of t equals 1 for the last two seconds of motion. To get the position graph, we have to look at the area under the velocity graph. Well, so let's do it. During the first second, the area is 1.5. 
So that means we move 1.5 units from wherever we start. Well, we happen to be given that we start at x equals minus 1. So after one second, we have to move up by 1.5 units, and that's going to put us about here. So you go over one second in time, and you go up 1.5 units. During the next second of motion, we go half a unit, 0.5. Our velocity is still positive, so we keep moving forward. So in the next one second, we're going to move another 0.5 units. Um, so again, we can see this curve starting to build up for the position graph. During the next second, between t equals 2 and t equals 3, um, again, we have an area of 0.5, but we're going to call this area negative because the velocity is negative. This thing is going to be going in the other direction. So yes, we have an area um, in magnitude equal to 0.5, but we're going to call it negative because the velocity is negative. So that means this thing is going to turn around and go back a half unit. Um, so the first three seconds of motion look like this, um, this curve here. Um, let's look at the last two seconds of motion. During the next second, which is between t equals 3 and t equals 4, we still have a negative velocity here, and we still have an area of 0.5. Um, so we go down another 0.5 in the next second. Uh, and then finally, the very last second of motion, we go um, up by 0.5, and so we're back up here. Um, and so finally, we get this curve that looks like this. Um, so there is our position graph. Once again, we can get the um, position function by thinking about what position function could we do this power lowering trick on in order to get, um, say, negative t plus 2 um, for the first three seconds. Well, so that function would look like this. Um, minus 1 half t squared plus 2t plus c. If you do the power lowering trick, You'd bring the 2 down in front, and so you'd get negative 1 ha half times 2, which is negative 1, which agrees with what we see here, um, times t to the first power. Um, the second term would be like 2t to the 0th, or no, 2t to the first. So if you brought the, the exponent, the 1 down, it'd be 1 times 2t to the 0, which would just give you a 2, and then you can always have a constant. As before, to establish this constant, we have to check a known point. And notice the known point we were given is... That, at, that x of 0 is equal to negative 1. And so if we just plug in 0 into our function, um, we would learn, well, 0 plus 0 plus c. That's if we plug in 0. Um, and that needs to e be equal to negative 1, so we just learned that c was negative 1. So this red curve would then be given by this polynomial here with c being equal to negative 1. So very, very last thing we'll do, let's get the equation of this purple part here. Um, what we're going to have to do is find the function that we could do a power lowering on in order to get t minus 4. Uh, and so that's going to look something like this. Um, you can check this first term. The first term would be 1 half t squared. Again, if you bring the 2 down and reduce it by 1, you'd get 2 times 1 half t to the first. Um, so that would be 1 t to the first, so that agrees. Um, minus 4t would be the next term. Um, and then once again, you get this plus c, this pesky little plus c. To figure out what the plus c is, we have to use a known point. Well, the last known point was over 3 up 1 half. That's where our red curve left, left off. So we can sort of say, but x of 3 we know is equal to 1 half. Well, so let's force this function to be equal to 1 half when we shove in x equals 3. Well, so let's shove in x equals 3. Um, the first term would give you 3 squared, and well, then times 1 half. So 9 halves, which is 4 and a half. If, if we put in a 2 for t, or excuse me, a 3 for t here, you'd get minus 12, and then plus c. And we have to force that to be equal to 1 half. Um, so algebraically, what we would find here is that c is going to have to be equal to 8 for that all to work. Uh, and so we have done it. This little purple curve here uh, is going to have the um, form 1 half t squared minus 4t, and then we just let that c be equal to 8. Um, so that's how you handle motion graphs. Um, if you're going from position to velocity to acceleration, you'd take slopes or you would lower exponents. Um, to go from acceleration to velocity to position to go back up, you would take areas or raise exponents. So hopefully that gives you a little introduction to motion graphs, maybe even a little introduction to calculus, and I hope you find this to be uh, pretty helpful. Thanks for checking this out.